Tornado here. And Suyoi. Sorry. What? I can't interrupt it. Don't hurt me. And we're back. A Gundam Tale. Tell me what to do. Okay, this is a pretty simple side dungeon. You're going to go into each room, solve whatever difficulty it throws at you, all in the process uh, while unlocking the true room or something like that. Yeah, like uh, the true th there's uh, like uh, door switches and like uh, some of these rooms, and like uh, you're basically finding them, hit all of them, so you can <laughs> unlock the true room. Dark Leo. Mm. Oh no! It be Dark Leo. He hurt me so bad. I do not want to die. Oh, I will Bakunetsu can him, and you will shoot everybody. So hey, oh, I got things to talk about. So you kept on bringing up time and again. Yes. So, okay, I'll just uh, put off what I have to say. Yay! Now. And then uh, go ahead and uh, okay, what's first? Cause like you got over three of these things, right? Y yes, I have three. Hey, okay, first one. Okay, first one. Eto, I was going to tell you about this cool ring I saw. A ring? Yes, it's a ring. It's like it's kind of like a you know how watches sometimes now have computers in them like smart smart watches. Yes. Jesus, these guys will not go down. Uh, so I see these smart. Uh, this is basically a smart ring. Mm -hmm. It's wireless. Uh, it can replace basically everything in your wallet practically. Really? That's what they say anyway. Cause uh, you know I keep a little handy dandy uh, toolkit in my wallet. Which has scissors, a knife, a filer, tweezers, a ruler. Yeah, so sure that, that's pretty damn good. And it's like it's barely the size of like two credit cards stacked on top of each other. That's pretty good. I don't think I can do that. But, uh, okay. <laughs> so know what you speak of when you speak of my wallet. I was just saying what they got or what they claimed. <laughs> Now, it was all like, hey, look at this cool, sweet thing. Uh, you know, if you uh, don't have your credit card, you can just tap this to something twice and it'll, like, do it. Also, it only turns on when it goes over your finger because it scans your fingerprint. What? Wait. Basically, when you slide it over your finger, it scans your fingerprint to make sure it's you. No, so it has, like, a scanner inside the ring? Yeah, on the inside. So when you put the ring on, it scans your finger for it to be active. Yes. And it turns off when you take it off. How long is the battery life? I don't know. I don't remember. But it charges pretty good. Okay. So that's able to act like a phone, uh, have a credit card on it, and just like uh, tap something. You transfer yeah. it. I saw it work for various things. It's also waterproof, apparently. Hmm. To a degree, to a certain amount of degrees, like, oh, you can take it this far underwater. The door has been locked. Oh, no. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh. One of these rooms. Just gotta fight. Yeah, standard procedure. Kill everything in your way. All shall fall. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so yeah, what can else take... can this ring do? I'm sorry, man. There's only so much I can remember. And yet you have multiple things you want to bring up. Yes, that's correct. This does not bode well. No, it doesn't. Because you're just going to have me asking a bunch of questions that you just will not have the <laughs> answers for, huh? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, uh, can, can a ring tell time? I think so. It looked like it had a screen on the top of it. Mm. Right, because... Basically makes it a ring watch? Is that a thing? Wait, what? It basically makes it a ring watch. Is that a thing? Feels like it's a thing. Hmm. Could be a thing. Maybe a thing. Could be. Yeah. Does the ring have like some garrote wire I can just like uh, pull out? No. You might be able to mod it to do that. Hmm. I won't promise anything on that. Uh, I just thought it was just like, oh, it's uh, you know, waterproof up to this long, meaning you can wear it in the shower. I'm like, I wouldn't. <laughs> it, it's only like. Two ninety nine. Two dollars and ninety nine cents. Two hundred dollars and ninety nine cents. Ah, okay. Two hundred dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah, two ninety nine. 
That's confusing. I'm sorry. I mean, when you say two ninety nine, I could be like two dollars ninety nine cents or like two hundred and ninety nine dollars. Okay. Like, no sense. No. Yeah. You're right. Uh, the other thing I saw. Okay, so we're just uh, getting we're off. Done of this with ring. the ring. Yep. Yeah, uh, can I at least act like a projector? I don't think so. Okay, so I can't be awesome Green Lantern with like. Uh, you know, my symbol above me as I give my O. You might be able to mod a flashlight into it. That'd be pretty sweet. Mm. Uh, other thing I saw. battery list phone. Mm -hmm. Doesn't require a battery. There's so many of them. Uh, yes. I saw this, and uh, it's like, oh, you know, these apparently have been a thing? Apparently? Like, there's been batteryless phones before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's saying, like, this phone, it looked, all it was was just a circuit board looking thing with numbers on it. Mm -hmm. It's like, all it can do is get, uh, receive calls and make calls. It can't do anything else. However, uh, other ones, other batteryless models, are all like, uh, they need to basically sit there and, like, charge for a while and rest, and then they'll have enough charge to get, you know, let you make a call. Mm -hmm. This one is continuously charging all the time, and uh, it will never need that. Holy shit, Resner, uh, Life Fang went down somehow. Mm. Nah, although it looks like it's a broken up phone. Yeah, basically. And I saw that, you know, they had it on an actual wireless charger, but they're like, normally it doesn't need that. Mm -hmm. uh, it absorbs air. Or no, it gets it from the general uh, ambient light and... Uh, radio signals. Mm hmm. Well, yeah. Can it do international or. I don't know. They didn't say. Like, you know, what are the rates on it? They said that you could talk infinitely on it. Mm hmm. Okay, but it's something that uh, charges on its own. Yep. Well, what's the size of it? Mm, I can't really, like, state to the people. I'd say, like, three or four inches wide, maybe seven inches long. Like, like my cell phone. Like, uh, walkie-talkie? Like my cell phone. Hmm. Which is the, S the Galaxy S5. Mm -hmm. Like, is it particularly thick, or is it, like, uh, modern no. phone thickness? No, it was, I mean, it was just the circuit board, so it was really thin. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Does now, it... The interesting thing was they were saying like if they just put these uh, like like they can feed off Wi-Fi spot they could feed off Wi-Fi spots or uh, if they put like these certain transmitters in uh, these certain transmitters in radio towers then like you would never need to charge batteries on your phones like hey man everyone could just have phones and like no one would ever need to charge them again batteries would become obsolete huh. or well, they didn't claim that but I'm claiming it okay so this is a particular phone. It's not a particular battery for phones. Yes, it's a particular phone. Okay, so like, uh, the phone would have to be designed this way. Yeah. It's a, it's a more of a proof of concept right now. And uh, it's pretty awesome, I'd say. I, I'm in a full, full support of it. Mm -hmm. uh, though some people in the comments were saying, like, oh yeah, you know, let's put all these transmitters up just shooting, you know, radio waves everywhere. It's like, let's just give us more cancer. That's great. So I was like, yeah, no, it was like a yeah, high Please, power you know, Give the sun credit where it's due. Right. Some people are saying if it's microwaves, uh, only high powered microwaves are dangerous to humans. Low power microwaves would not be that bad. Or would not be bad. Though they said they'd wait for independent studies to see how bad the side effects would be on this sort of light radio wave. Huh. Now, uh, another thing was that they were also testing to make, uh, make it be able to stream video. Using a very low power e ink screen. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know what that is. Me neither. I just was reiterating the name of it. See, I can remember some things. I can remember some things! Door unlocked. Is that it? Do I have to pull a lever? Well, uh, do uh, walk the area a bit because you know how this type of game is. Like, if it can hide someone, something with the camera, it will. Right. But nothing happened. Oh, 
Okay. Like, uh, yeah. Check your corners and all that stuff. Right. And, uh, so, bring up your map. Map? Yeah, your map. Uh, oh, okay. So, uh, you're essentially gonna be doing that for the rest of this dungeon. Going, uh, through each corridor, seeing what lies at the end, if you need to kill something or not. Checking for chests, but mainly for those switches. So that you can unlock the big room. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like I said earlier, like, we'll have enough time to talk about your stuff, no problem. Maybe okay. even yours. <laughs> Man, I wish I could run from battles sometimes. Well, you could always throw on an invisible. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh. But, uh, okay, so like an e-ink screen or something like that for video chat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, these aren't bad, but the thing is, um... Why, uh, the, do, do people not remember the hand crank? Hand crank? Like, uh, sometimes I go up to Fry's Electronics uh, for one reason or another, and I'll find myself just kind of wandering through the um, electronics uh, sections. That section, it's like uh, in between video games and in between, like, uh, real computer stuff. Like, uh, little uh, doodads here and there, like flashlights or uh, modems for computers or j just other little electronic general things. One thing that catches my eye quite often is like they have like survival gear uh, equipment up there. Uh -huh. And uh, one thing that really caught my eye, which yeah, I don't think about it, I should probably get one of those in the future, uh -huh. is it's uh, called a uh, survival radio. And uh, what it is, is like it's a radio. They can act like a, uh, a normal radio, pick up stations and stuff like that. And the way it's powered is that it has a crank on the back. Uh huh. Yeah, and you just crank it uh, to build up electricity, and it's able to work like that. Like you have to crank it continuously, or no, no, you uh, crank it for like a minute or two to like charge up its energy, and then it's good for like a few hours before you gotta crank it again. And I swear it's not the only object I've seen like this that has crank technology. Like I. So I've seen flashlights up there, and maybe walkie-talkies that also have the same kind of technology. Interesting. So we're like, okay, it's not continuously charging on its own, it's not doing a thing by itself, but, you know, for something that seems really sturdy that's meant for outdoor, like, uh, survival and stuff, which is where you would think you would need, this wireless don't need to be connected to civilization energy, like, the hand crank seems pretty darn good if it's able to do that. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, uh, why not give us, like, the hand crank cell phone or something like that? <laughs> like, uh, honestly, I don't see these phones being good for much of anything else unless in an emergency situation. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Hmm. This is suddenly becoming very bad. Why, well, yes, things just did get very bad. Uh, who are you gonna full regenerate? I ain't gonna full regenerate anybody, I'll die. Uh-huh. Bringing in Reznor because she's got a lot of health. I might be able to... Yes. Yes, I can see it. I've already weakened this guy. At this point, it'll only be those two shooting at me. It should be only those two shooting. Okay, never mind. It's three people shooting at me. This could be worse, I suppose. Lapis, get up in here. Lapis, can you do a thing? Ha ha, can I do a thing? Oh boy, you don't even know. Shot burst? To hit everybody. Why? Okay, fair enough question. I'll, get, I'll give you that. I don't feel I need Gatling fire, though. I've already weakened it with two Gat... Uh, yeah, two you already gave the whole, I weakened them so they should die, and we saw how that turned out. Well, now it's even more true! So true now. There's no way in hell that he's gonna survive this. Ain't no way. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I was right. But in an alternate universe, in the Schrodinger alternate universe, I was wrong. I was so wrong. And you just aren't gonna revive your teammates. I'm reviving them. Uh 
Oh, shit. Hi. I need to get all the way back to hell. Yeah, there we are. This is the good shit. Oh, you, you're gonna charge, huh? Oh, you're about to boost, huh? Oh, what's your boost? What's his boost? Hmm, let's see. Considering everything he's done... Shooting. Yeah, he's either gonna super shoot you or uh, hit you with a really hard fist. Well, now, if I hit and overheat him first! Or do that, that works too. The Amy, I'm amazing, everyone loves me. Hmm. Okay, let's bring people back. Let's just start bringing people back. Hmm. Hi. Please don't get yourself killed. Could always switch him out with someone else. You mean her? Well, I was thinking Fritz and have him Gatling fire to hell out of him. Well, if I do that, though, then I might not be able to revive Lapis if Fritz goes first. Hmm. Was this a forced encounter or a random encounter? Uh, random. Hmm, right. Well, uh, seeing how this turned out, you should heal ev after you win this. Heal everybody and go save. Yeah, I understand. But, yeah, go save after clearing every room. Because, uh, yeah. uh, I knew the enemies were going to be a little bit on the tough side, this being a bonus dungeon. But, I didn't think that they would come close to actually game over in you. Figure you'd have to deal with the odd death now and Ooh, then. I just learned Plasma Bomb. Hmm. I learned Plasma Bomb, I did, I did! <laughs> okay, let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, let's throw in Invisible. Who's got that? Only I have the Invisible. Huh, that's always an option. Get the fuck out of here. Did you heal everybody? No. Didn't really have that much. Ah, you're low on TP. Yeah, I am. I should probably get the fuck out. Go back to Earth. <laughs> Go back to Earth, take a nap, come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Casual, casual. They can't all be the ships from Final Fantasy 3. We, yeah, we can't sleep on the ship, right? right? No. We can't sleep in our damn mobile suits. <laughs> Fucking, I guess they're not that comfortable. Uh, we've seen the inside of those cockpits. They aren't all that comfortable. They might do if they really need to, but no. Yeah. Oh, I slept in a chair last night. It's not but, that bad. Yeah, you know, yeah. That was a chair. But uh, like, you remember what the inside of their cockpits look like? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, so I'd say save the game. Then uh, after that, like, use your GPS. <clears throat> oh boy. I healed by touching the save point. Anyway. Huh. Isn't this the same team that nearly killed you last time? No, there was like one or two more. Ah, well, if you're sure, I just remember seeing the three when I turned to look and saw what's happening. Okay, but while you deal with that, uh, like, keep I'll go, yeah, I'll go on uh, continue my thing saying. I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, the hand crank is like uh, quite a handy dandy like item to have when it comes to recharging stuff. And it seems really uh, simple to manage and things like that. Like, I wouldn't imagine it have too much in the way of breakable parts. As opposed to, like, some kind of, um, uh, solar charger. I feel like that's not the right word, but, like, that, I think that gets that point across, uh, more or less. Right. Right, uh, their thing with radio waves seems interesting. I would, uh, you know, I certainly question, like, uh, how breakable is it? It seemed pretty brittle being it was just a circuit cream. Well, yeah, but you said they were in proof of concept, didn't you? Yeah. The fact that they were able to build something, here's the bare minimum without any casing or anything like that, and here's how it works, or at least that's how I would interpret, like, seeing it. Yeah. Right. So, we got uh, the smart ring, uh, the Infinifone, and uh, what's the next uh, great invention you wish to? Ah, uh, see, this is where you fucked up. What? You assumed that all three were inventions. I just said I had three things to talk about. Mm hmm The first two happen to be inventions. But they are not all inventions. 
So I tell you about a. Uh, the third one's a story. Uh -huh. Slash something I want to do at some point in my life, maybe. Hmm. So my uncle, uh, I don't know if I told you, but he was he did a delivery recently. No, you haven't. Okay, I'm saving the bottom slots. You mm -hmm. said. Right. Uh, slot eight. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. My you uncle, have an uncle that does deliveries? I guess. Uh, it seems like he was driving a big-ass truck. Like, I'm thinking an 18-wheeler. <laughs> okay, so uh, don't look too much into the backstory. Let's just look at the setup for this story. Yeah, he just told me he made a delivery. Or he went, uh, went all the way to California from here, which is Texas. <laughs> uh, so what do I do? Should I actually Menu, go? auto drive. Back to Earth. Uh... Oh. I can't even do that? You have to escape first, since oh. this is technically a dungeon. But I can do it, right? Yes, you can auto-drive from the moon to a place on Earth. It's up to you where you want to go. You could uh, go straight to Tremmy's, uh, since she has a free bed. Or you can go to Marie's place, since you can sleep there for free. Maybe even upgrade your mobile suits, like, uh, a little bit, uh, considering what went down. Right. So, my uncle uh, was doing this truck thing. Alright. Uh, He's doing going... a truck thing and making a delivery. Like, delivering the contents of the truck? Yeah. I mm -hmm. forget what it was. I think it was metal or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, delivering all the way to California, someplace called Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so you, have you ever heard of Route 66? The infamous Route 66? No. I haven't. It was like some uh, interstate, or it wasn't interstate originally. Just this big, you know, road. Uh, like, there are songs about it. It's like supposedly haunted or something or evil. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's this Route 66 that went around America or something. It was through America, and they changed it now. It's Interstate 40 now. Mm -hmm. It's now Interstate Highway. Um, he went down that, and apparently it takes you straight through the Mojave Desert. Hmm. Which I'd only heard of because of New, you know, Fallout New Vegas. Ah. So that's where that is, over in Arizona, slash Nevada, slash that area. Anywhere west of us. <laughs> so, yeah, he had to go through the Mojave Desert. Ah, are you going to uh, talk to Marie, uh, yeah. see if you can upgrade some mobile suits? Sure. Uh, let's see. Upgrade. Hmm. That ain't happening. Let's see. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, okay, I see where we is. Ah, uh, right. Durability. So you don't die as much. Hmm. I should probably save again, but I'll save when I get there. Right, right. I can auto-drive out of here, right? Uh, no. Uh, to be outside? Outside? Uh, yeah. You have to be outside, get into the spaceship, fly back up to the moon. Okay. And then walk from the moon base all the way up uh, back to that one particular moon base. Oh. Okay. Shouldn't be that hard if you throw invisible on. But uh, last time when I uh, brought that up, you said you didn't want to because you wanted to fight the enemies uh, that were there. Right, because I knew this was going to be tough. But okay, yeah. But just keep that in mind. Anytime you want to refill your TP for free, you got to make your way wherever you're from on the moon uh, back to Earth and then walk all the way from here back to where you left Still off. Still right up, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, may want to be a little bit conservative uh, as you make your way through the moon. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so, uh, Interstate yeah. 40. Yeah, he's going down through the Mojave Desert and he was talking about how uh, hot it is. Mm -hmm. that, like, uh, he's like, oh, you know... Uh, he's saying like you know my truck never gets hot, my truck got hot. Mm -hmm. It's like you know he had to cut. Uh, basically, at some point the truck started to overheat and he actually had to turn off the air conditioner mm -hmm. just to allow it to like not take up as much energy and cool down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you know of course he'd have to quickly put that back on because then it got hot in there. Mm -hmm. And he said it was 125 degrees out there. Mm -hmm. And like dang, <laughs> sounds like standard Texas weather. Mm. Uh. Now I'm wondering. It's close. Am I in the right area? I'm wondering about that. Well, keep on going for now. The worst that can happen is that you got to turn back around and walk all the way back. But if that's the case, you don't need to do that. Because all you need to do is just quick travel to someplace on Earth and fly your way back up to the moon. This doesn't seem right. 
Right. Uh, I remember being like this twisty turny. I was, uh. uh yeah, you know what? Let's get. No, 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 no. Keep going. I spent so much TP. Okay, so it was the right path. Okay, you're Why don't right. you have felt silly just leaving like right before you got there? Yes, yes, I would have. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, he was going through there. Uh, so my grandparents and me were talking about it, because they've made the trip too. Because uh, since my cousin uh, lives in California, the one that works for Pixar. Um, and they said like, okay, so basically you go, uh, he had to go up a damn mountain in a 18 wheeler mm -hmm. the the interstate goes up a mountain the and uh, andes i think mm -hmm. uh yeah it goes straight up a mountain and he said an 18 wheeler and how the cool factor no, or was I was like i'm thinking if you're around. building a road and you go up a mountain what was around that mountain that made it such a bad prospect to just go around no clue you no know i do know hmm uh, apparently, going up that damn mountain is really hard in an 18-wheeler because of how steep it was. Mm -hmm. He said it slowed him down to a five-mile crawl, five-mile-per-hour crawl. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm. Oh. And... Let's go for overheats. Okay. Um. Yeah. So that was apparently a thing. But they were telling me about how you go up this uh, one mountain. And you'll, like, come across this town called Flagstaff, mm -hmm. which they said was actually really incredibly nice. It's right before you get to the desert. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you know, it's actually really cool up there because of how high it is. Uh, they got souvenirs because I've seen stuff around our house that says Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I know there was something about it, like, it's really nice up there. Very pretty. And, uh... Then they said something about how, you know, it might be pretty, but, like, basically you start to go down the mountain after that, and, uh, you come across, like, one town right afterwards. It's, like, you know, basically the last town before it. Mm -hmm. Little town. It's, like, you know, basically you get in there, it's, like, last chance for gas for 50 miles. You best get gas. Water, too, probably. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, like, then you just go straight through the desert. Ain't nothing else out there. Just cactuses and abandoned cars. <laughs> huh. They said it was because they had heard that uh, Indians that live out there get like uh, money from the government and they just buy cars and don't ever change the oil in them. They'll just drive them till they die. Then abandon them. I don't know how true that is. Wait, uh, okay, but what's the goal? Free car. Wait, what, what, uh, okay, I got lost somewhere. Okay, okay. There's, There's abandoned cars out there. Uh-huh. Uh, my grandparents said this is because uh, Indians are out... I just realized... Oh, wait, this is fine. Okay. Um, they said they had heard it's because Indians get out there... They live out there. Uh-huh. Uh, or from around there, at least. Around there. Mm -hmm. uh, they basically get uh, government money. Mm -hmm. And that they just buy the cars... And you know, dr uh, you know, use them for whatever. You know, driving around, and they just never change the oil on them. They just, you know, because they got it for essentially free. <laughs> and then you know, they basically abandon them out there. I don't know how true that is. I don't know. It might be a little racist. Right. So, you're telling me that they go out, get a car, drive it out there, and just leave them out there whenever they're done using them, and supposedly just go and buy more cars. Is that what you're telling me the situation is? That's what it sounded like to me. I have doubts. I you think that they just heard something from someone who was racist. You didn't question the explanation or something? I was, I was like, okay, but... But doesn't it make out? sense <laughs> to sell the car? Who picks them up Like after they drive the car out there? Like, were they driving so slow they had a horse like walking alongside them? Because they just knew? Did they drive the car out there and then shoot it with a gun because it was just time for the old girl to go? Like, <laughs> no, they're like, saying they, it ran this, out of oil. Like, this seems like like uh, like okay, oil, like not like, gas, oil. Yeah, like not gas. They said they still bought gas for it. They just didn't like change the oil or keep up maintenance on the things. Okay, so like they basically ran them ragged until uh, like a uh, situation popped up, 
and then they just drove them. Um, they were still good enough to drive out into like the desert for whatever reason along this road. Left them there and somehow made it back. That's the part I'm wondering to, about. Like uh, to continue this process of wasting cars. Yeah, I, 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 I doubt this, it too. Like. There was one other thing. I, I that just to seems like the, like the weirdest thing ever. It's like that, that's right. that's such a waste of money. I mean, are you telling me that there is literally a treasure trove of cars. abandoned cars out there along that's what this I was road? Thinking. It's like that if someone cars? just like took the time to go out and drag these things back with a tow truck. I bet someone does that. There's nothing in here. You got a treasure chest, didn't you? Yeah, but I thought you said there was a switch in each one. Oh, I said you gotta scour through each room oh. to see what they have in them. Be it uh, a fight or a switch or some other such. Okay. So yeah, that's what I had heard and that's what I started to think. I was like, are you telling me there's just a bunch of free cars out there? Shit! But yeah, for 50 miles it's like nothing but that. Uh -uh. Uh, until you get... Uh, my granddad, or no, my uncle said he saw like... He got harassed by Border Patrol. Uh-huh. Because, uh... Wait, what's Border Patrol out there? Because it's Arizona and stuff, like, near the border. We're, we're in the southern states. It's near the border of Mexico. Oh, yeah. They, uh, basically, they harassed him because uh, he has a big truck, and he was. Uh, they were basically trying to make sure he wasn't hauling illegals. Oh, well, isn't that as simple as just opening up the back? Yeah. Yeah, that, basically, like, have you found any... Did you see anyone walking? Did you pick up anyone? Apparently, he said he saw somebody hiding who quickly hid in some bushes. Mm. And I told him about where. Mm. Like, I'm just thinking, is, was he just saying that to get them to the fuck off him, or did he actually see somebody? It's like, also, apparently you're told not to pick anyone up out there, because there's, like, prisons out there and stuff. Somewhere out there is, like, you know, basically you could find escaped convicts out there. Mm. Because, you know, that, it's a very good way to get them to not want to escape when all that's out there is certain fucking death. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes that could be better than certain <laughs> prisons. I understand that, but still. <laughs> so, I was very surprised with that. I was like, wait, what if you find someone who's been abandoned, like, the other, like, their car is, like, totaled or something, and they're, like, trying to walk to the nearest civilization or something like that, or they're trying to survive. Like, if I saw someone walking on 125 degree weather, fuck it, I'm picking them up, because they might fucking die out there. <laughs> I don't. Mm. If I don't pick them up, that person's death is essentially on my hands. I could have prevented it. Oh, is that what you believe? Yes, I could have prevented that death. Yeah. Though, okay. to be fair, they could just turn around and stab me while I'm in the car with them. And bullshit that missed, you flinched. Unless that was a dodge. <laughs> yeah, in other words, good dodge. <laughs> um, so I was just like, oh, I don't know about that. But, you know, okay. So there was that, and they told me that after a while, after like 50 miles, you come across a town in the desert uh, called Needles. And it's like, you're still in the desert at that point, but it is the only town for 50 miles that has gas or water, and you're going to have to pay for both. Hmm. You, you ain't getting either for free. Like, some places you can get water for free, not here. Not here, so... Uh -uh. It's like, then you got like a long while to go to the next place, and it's still in the desert. Essentially. Mm. It's just like, it's a trek, but I want to do it. Hmm. I'm going with you. Oh. Okay. I mean, you know, you're certainly going to have to change your mind or come to certain terms when it's like, uh... Picking people up? Yeah, picking people up. Fair enough. I know you really want to their escape convicts, basically. No. Uh, really? It's not that? You're fine with that? You're fine with the escape convicts? I trust the escape convicts, because I know they want to get, you know, get out alive. <laughs> They learned their lesson. <laughs> oh, like, you know how I am about people in general. Mm. I mean, like, you know, we could see someone dressed as, like, a nun walking out there, like, in Jesus, the heat. And I'd be black. like, you know, no, do not pick that person up. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, it's weird enough to, like, see someone dressed as a nun just walking in the desert like that. They were clearly going to California or something. And they lost their thing. And all the other nuns fell along the way. They're dead now. Dead nuns. Uh, don't ask why I didn't right. see them. She had to right. eat them. I swear, if I ever find myself in a situation where I'm driving with you along that road, I'll probably bring a knife just so I could stab you if you even think to pick someone up. Well, then, yeah, you're not coming with. Because I would not let someone survive that, not survive that. 
Because I would probably drive the yeah, rest of the way. you think that they're just going to die or something. You yeah. basically guilt yourself into setting yourself up for danger. You can't walk that shit. Yes, you can. How you gonna How walk you that? Why would you BS me that you can't walk that? How would humans you walk have that? survived worse. Yeah, but those were decent or better and hardier humans. We're shit now. <laughs> In your opinion. Yeah. I mean, like, Americans. You know, I may not like humanity, but I certainly hold it to a pretty high standard. So you just roll down the window, you can do it! And not just even. Uh, not even, just flip them off and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> not even. Providing that hate motivation. I will find that guy and I will flip him back off. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never find you. I'm not paying uh, a lot of attention right now. Not worth. Yeah, not worth the time or effort. Hmm, I see. But yeah, uh, basically it's a hell of a trek, and I'd, I'd, I, I don't know, my grandparents have gone on it, uh, my uncle's been on it, I think my mom's been along it. Hmm. I want to do it, just cause. And my brother was like, oh, you should totally drive, uh, drive it, that way you can get over your paranoia of driving that you have. You know, like, oh, you think you've got it, you know, you think you're scared now, you go drive you know, through some real hard shit and see how it is. I, I don't really see how it's hard. Well, it's, like, suburban areas are harder compared yeah. because, you know, pedestrians, animals, like, yeah, we don't have to worry about other it. mofos that are just, like, driving erratically because of the easier access to alcohol. But you got nothing but desert and people that just want to get to their destination, so I don't really see how that's harder. Yeah, I know. I don't, like... I know my brain thinks irrationally about it sometimes, like, oh, what if I hit someone back there? Or what if I ran that red light? Oh, it's red from the other side, so maybe it's red from this side, or whatever. My brain thinks irrational things about those things. Uh -uh. Yeah, even if I'm sure, you know, that I did fine. So my brain could think to my, you know, I was like, well, what if you hit someone out there and didn't notice, and now they're just like 500 miles from civilization bleeding on the side of the road? How would you not notice? There's nothing but desert and I road know. out there. Dude, do you know how many times people have told me if you hit somebody, you're going to know? No. A lot. They told me that a lot. Mm. So, you know, have you ever hit, like, an animal out there? Or, like, a twig? It's like, yeah. So, you know, and you felt it, didn't you? Yeah. Then you're gonna feel a freaking person! <laughs> it's like, yeah, fair point, I understand where you're coming from, but my brain will not let... Like, it'll just bug me with that shit. Right. And on that note, uh, it's around that time... Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll have to pick this up with the rest of the stuff you have to talk about in the next episode. See you later.